Today we are going to talk about the Dave Ramsey baby steps and all the pros and all the cons. And if you have followed me for a hot second, you know I have an opinion and you know it's going to be honest because that's what I'm about. So let's discuss Dave Ramsey's plan to baby step our way to financial freedom. And trust me, this will be a comprehensive analysis of the Dave Ramsey baby steps like you have never seen because it'll be the truth about it from someone who's doing it. Hi, I'm Wendy Valencia. My husband Mauricio, my daughter Melina, and I have been on the Dave Ramsey baby steps for about two and a half years. In that time, we have paid off $180,000. Well, $180,120.19 to be exact, but we have a long way to go. Like, $125,000 more of our debt and $35,000 more on loans that we co-signed on. So yeah, a lot. So for us, this is going to be a long process, but we are committed to seeing it through the end. So today we are going to go over the pros and the cons of the Dave Ramsey baby steps, but I'll tell you, I actually have quite a few cons and I don't necessarily believe that this program, the way it's laid out is the best for everyone, but I am committed to giving you an honest opinion so you can decide for yourself. So keep in mind, this is coming from someone who is currently living through the hell that is baby step two. So take everything I say with a grain of salt because I'm a little irritated at this program right now. <laughs> I love it. So hopefully this video will help you decide if the program is right for you, if the program mostly is right for you and you need to alter a few steps, or if this program is absolutely not for you and you really not need to find something else. Before we get into it, these are the seven baby steps for Dave Ramsey. I am not gonna go over each one. If you are on this video, you probably already know those, so I'm not gonna waste your time reading them. But if you don't know what they are, go ahead and push pause and read through those seven. So let's jump right into the pros. Pro number one, if you can follow the plan, you will be debt free in a relatively quick period of time. Not everybody can get out of debt in under two years like most people, but most people can on this plan. We are not one of those people because we had a lot of debt. But if we paid off our minimum payments every month and we're not paying off as much to debt as possible, it would take us decades to pay off all our debt. Pro number two, the plan itself is very simple conceptually. I mean, you saw the seven baby steps, they're, they're easy. Just seven simple steps to financial freedom. And in theory, they apply to every single person in every single situation. Pro number three, if you are low on motivation, the debt snowball will keep you motivated throughout your debt payoff. Well, at least until you get to the really, really big debts and pay those off because those will take longer in between. But those little tiny debts at the very beginning, if you have a lot of them, paying those off quickly every month will be like a huge excitement boost. And that boost kicks in after you've paid off about your third debt. And it's, it's pretty powerful when you pay it off. You're like, yes, I can do it. Pro number four, you have the ability to be motivated at every turn. You can listen to his radio show. You can watch him on YouTube. There are about a million Dave Ramsey YouTubers who are going through the process and documenting their lives or have gone through the process to keep you motivated. So staying motivated while you're doing it is not an issue if you know where to look. Pro number five, you learn which insurances are important and worth the money. Hello, life insurance. Pro number six, it'll be worth it when it's over, or so I'm told, not better. Pro number seven, once you're done, you will have three to six months of emergency expenses saved up in a money market account. There when you need it, when life happens and there's an emergency. Pro number eight, once you're done, which is a term I use synonymously with baby step seven, 
because once you're in baby step seven in my world you're done with the plan once you are done with baby step seven you have the potential for tremendous wealth especially if you are young when you start the plan pro number nine it gives you a plan if you don't have another one for people who maybe weren't raised to be fiscally responsible this is a plan and it can walk you through life by following this financial plan because it's easy so let's get into the cons because i know that's why you're all here con number one you'll be in hell while you're on baby step two there will be fights there will be arguments but your communication with your spouse will increase so that that is a pro but it's going to be rough because there are going to be more discussions if you're like me you didn't discuss money a lot but there was a lot of money stress but it was silent stress now if you're one of those people who fights with your spouse constantly about money then you may actually have a lot less money stress because you will have agreed to a budget ahead of time so for us it it causes more money discussions because we were more like ostriches like shove your head in the sand and hope and pray everything comes out okay con number two if you have any amount of money saved up you are going to take a thousand dollars out of that and put all the rest of it towards debt which is terrifying to most people now if you didn't have anything saved up this con really doesn't matter to you but you know most people do have a little bit of money saved or maybe they don't i don't know but we did and i know i've heard this over and over and over taking your little nest egg and putting it towards debt is kind of terrifying and it freaks most people out con number three i cannot tell you the number of people i have seen start this program and quit because it is hard if you're going to start it you need to be 100 and 10 percent committed to it because did i say it's hard con number four there's actually a hidden baby step 3b if you don't own your own house where you are actually saving up for a down payment on the house so it's not really seven baby steps it's actually eight but then some of the later baby steps are combined together and it's a whole baby step analysis sort of thing but that one's not such a big deal con number five there is no way in god's green earth a plan can fit somebody who is struggling to feed a family of five every month and somebody who is making a, a half a million dollars one financial plan is not equal for both of those people the plan has to be designed more for one end than the other and the Dave Ramsey plan is legitimately more designed for the people on the struggling every month versus the people who have large incomes and maybe have decided that they just want to get out of debt because they don't like having debt payments every month for us we have a significant income and with significant income leads significant Murphy visits which leads me into con number six one thousand dollars is way too low for an emergency fund even lower income people say this it's not just me because what happens is they cycle through a month of being really strict and then something comes up and they have to use their emergency fund and then they have to put more money to the emergency fund and something comes up and then they have to use their emergency fund and it's a vicious cycle and a lot of people go through this this is actually why we pad the budget and have sinking funds because we don't want to have to touch our emergency fund every single month and truthfully in the two and a half years that we've been on this plan we have not had to touch our emergency fund once because we have a cushion because we have sinking funds because we plan for the unexpected con number seven the debt snowball is frequently the most expensive way to get out of debt and if you're committed to getting out of debt like we are you don't want to spend an extra like in our case maybe fifteen hundred dollars look the debt snowball for us from this point on this is from our undebted right now which is the the software that we use to track our debts as of today if we paid 
it paid on our snowball that's expected and we did the traditional debt snowball way, we would pay $146,913. But if we paid the debt avalanche, we'd pay $144,532. So yeah, that's $1,500 that we wouldn't have to pay if we use the debt avalanche. But you know, the debt snowball isn't about math, it's about motivation. So for some people, if you need that motivation, the debt snowball is the best way to do it. But if you don't need motivation because you are committed to getting out of debt forever, maybe there's a different plan out there for you. Con number eight, Dave's investment strategy is weak and not designed for the people that have high incomes and the potential to be very, very, very wealthy. And that's all I'm gonna say on that. Con number nine, the closer you get to debt freedom, the more credit card offers you get. I'm like, come on people, save a tree. Stop sending me these, I'm not gonna have them anymore. Con number 10, for those of you like us who have a 401k match, so for every certain percentage you put into your 401k, your employer matches that. It is mathematically idiotic to not put that minimum percentage in. Now that is supposed to be only during baby step two. And we are oddly enough actually following this even though we know it's idiotic. We're kind of treating it as a punishment for financial irresponsibility. We. We know it hurts. It hurts us every month not to do it. So it basically is incentive to work a little harder and a little faster to pay off that debt. Con number 11, your credit score is gonna be zero when you're done. That means higher insurance payments and a mortgage underwriter if you don't already own a house. Con number 12, the beans and rice diet not necessarily the healthiest choice. It means lots of processed foods in comparison to the more expensive whole organic foods. Sure, you can actually eat fairly healthy on this plan, but it does require you to put more in your food budget than most people will put. And the food budget is 90% of the time where people cut first. I don't know why I'm a foodie. I'm not cutting my food. Although I, that's not true because I have cut my food. And con number 13, you can't actually start the plan until you're current on all your bills. So there is another super secret step, step zero, where you have to get current on your bills. And for some people that can take a year. So yeah, it adds time. There are actually a ton more pros and cons, but this video is already long enough. And I thought these were the most major that you really needed to address. If you have any questions about the plan and being on the plan, feel free to leave me a comment or a question down below. I do check all of my comments and I answer any questions that I get. For us knowing all the cons, maybe we didn't know all of the cons when we started. I certainly didn't realize how difficult baby step two would be. We still are choosing to be on this plan. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I actually would recommend this plan heartily but with alterations depending on your personal life because personal finance is ultimately that. It's personal. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out.